And we still have in the studio G.D. Benson, a public affairs commentator. And uh, once again, thank you very much for staying with us. Thank you. Um, listening to the Minister of Information, do you agree um, with his thought or is there some sort of distortion here and there? It's late in the day. Um, this is not when the government should be issuing warnings. Um, somebody has slapped you five times and then you finally decide to act or react and then it is the issuance of a warning. Somebody who you clearly have more powers over. Um, I think that the government has not done well to protect um, Nigeria's, Nigeria's interest in Ghana and Nigerians residents and doing business in Ghana. Um, and it is because of the lethargy of the government, um, the manifest irres irresponsiveness of the government that the Ghanaian authorities have continued to do this to Nigeria. I mean, the, I think the height of it was when our mission was demolished, not by a government agency, but by an individual. Yeah. So it's clearly an indication that let Nigeria be damned. And at this time, the government is still issuing a warning. It doesn't, it doesn't show a government that is proactive. It doesn't show a government that has a spunk. By now, several phone calls should have been exchanged between the president of Nigeria and the president of Ghana. Um, threats should have been issued even to the extent of ECOWAS and the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. If anything, I mean, Ghana has an upper hand with the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement because the headquarters of the body is going to be cited in Ghana. Yeah. So, and that was because Nigeria was um, what's delaying in signing the pact. And probably that thing would have been cited in Abuja. But that aside, we've gotten too much um, disrespect from Ghana a country that is less than the population of Lagos, a country that Nigeria towers above in very many respects. I mean, if, you to, if Nigeria and Ghana were to stand, I think the only real issues that we should be able to co compete on is when the Ghanaian black stars and the super egos of Nigeria are uh, Play playing football. Yeah. The population of Nigeria, the economy of Nigeria, the talents and skills in Nigeria, all of those tower well above Ghana. Do, do you, I want, I want to get, you know, your thoughts, you know, in an earlier interview with yes. um, Mr. Kwame John Tua, he, yeah. he, you know, almost made it seem like, um, you know, some of these facts were exaggerated. Okay. So do you feel like the Minister of Information and its complaints are valid or could these things be slightly exaggerated? He also stated that these laws um, that have yeah. been placed are not just, you know, targeting strictly Nigerians. There are other people also in those businesses. Yeah, so this, that's the latest issue. It, and it just happens to be that this is another one that has brought the issue of Nigeria-Ghana relations to the fore in recent times. I've listened to um, the president of Nigeria-Ghana Business Association or Business Council, yeah. uh, Prince Ademilui. I mean, he, he's somebody who has a good understanding of the issues, at least yeah. from the business angle. And whilst the law may not directly target Nigerians, Nigerians are what? Constitute a large population of foreigners who are doing business in the axis that the Ghanaian authorities have now imposed um, new fees. Yeah. So there's, there's a tendency for it to be seen that Nigerians are the target. But that's not the, that's not the only issues. I mean, there's been regular, from the, from, the, from the release by the minister, there's been regular deportation of Nigerians. I mean, Nigeria has lost towards two missions, one in Julius in Yeri Street and one in Kumasi area or something. Those are issues that the federal government should not have taken lightly. Those are issues for which the federal government should have demanded a written apology from the government of Ghana. So, I mean, this is because we're not, we're not um, holding ourselves to a high standard. We're not holding, a, our, the government is not giving the citizens confidence that as long as, wherever you are, as long as you're doing the right thing, the weight of the government of Nigeria will protect you. And why, why do you think that is? Lethargy. Lethargy on the part of the government, nonchalance, let the public be damned. Those are the, those are the reasons. Do you also feel like there is a reason behind the animosity between the two countries? Is there, is there certain things that we may not be seeing? Well, um, you know, that might be hidden between these incidents. It's not impossible that there is. But you see, when a country like Ghana slaps you once and you don't do anything, slaps you a second time, and slaps you a third time, 
um, they, they've taken it that um, you can't do anything. And that is not the way that Nigeria should be seen. For heaven's sake, we're supposed to be the giant of Africa. We may have lost that position by, we may have lost that position by the very things that we have done to ourselves. And that is why a country like Ghana will be acting in the manner that this is happening. Yeah. We, we, need to, we need to rethink our foreign policy. We need to rethink our relationship with the West Africa sub-region. I mean, if Nigeria were to exit ECOWAS, the threat of Nigeria exiting ECOWAS alone on account of, on account of um, the simmering relationship with, between Nigeria and Ghana is something that will get the attention of ECOWAS. It's not, this is not a way that we should continue to go. It's sad. So we need to do better with our... We need to do a lot better. We don't need to do better. We need to do a lot better. A lot, lot better. I, I want to quickly talk also on, um, of course, the minister, you know, hasn't said it, you know, verbally, but it seems to be applied in some of, you know, the statements that he is making um, of, of uh, the principle of uh, reciprocity. Yeah. Uh, do you think that maybe we might be able to um, take certain actions that, you know, will send a clear message to Ghana? Yes, that is what I imagine should have happened at the second instance. So, I mean, if you remember when Ambassador Ashiru was Minister of um, Foreign Affairs, a, a plane took off from Nigeria and landed in South Africa. And I think all Nigerians or the entire um, passengers were repatriated or deported back to Nigeria. There was a principle of reciprocity. I think the next or second plane that landed from South Africa to Nigeria, everybody was sent back. And then South Africa called for a truce. So this is such a time. It's such a time as this that we should be seeing such a thing. Interesting, indeed. Judy Benson, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me.